Angela Romine or Lincoln Huff? Who is the pro-gun fighter for District Number 30? That is the question you guys are asking us every single day right now. Aaron Dore here, guys, with the Missouri Firearms Coalition. This report is for gun owners in and around the city of Springfield. And what you are asking us, again, is not just who's going to vote pro-gun in advance of the August 2nd primary, but Who's going to fight for gun rights if elected and sent to Jefferson City? You know, we live in a time right now where Republican rhino backstabbers are attacking us more and more and more, both in Jeff City and especially in Washington, D.C. We saw just last month Roy Blunt and a dozen other senators in the Republican conference in D.C. stood there with Chuck Schumer and Dianne Feinstein and passed the biggest gun control bill we have seen pass in Congress in almost 30 years. But if you ask Roy Blunt, he's 100% pro-gun. He'd raise his hand and promise. So the question you're asking us is, who is pro-gun? But more importantly, or as importantly, how do we know? Who can we trust? Because talk is cheap in general, and it's doubly cheap at election time in a Republican Party primary. So we're going to break down Angela Romine and Lincoln Huff and tell you guys in this report where they stand on gun rights and how you can know who the pro-gun candidate in this race is. We're going to begin with Angela Romine. Angela Romine, local office holder in the Springfield area. And Angela was one of the first candidates in the state to return the Missouri Firearms Coalition candidate survey. Like I said, talk is cheap. So we want to see the candidates put their views on gun rights in writing. We want to see a candidate survey, which we give them, filled out with their name on it so we can hold them accountable and tell you where they stand, not just in a phone call to our office, not over a cup of coffee, but in writing on the record. And so in writing and on the record, Romine has said she supports expanding Missouri's Stand Your Ground law. Angela Romine knows we have a problem with Stand Your Ground law here in Missouri, and that problem is that we have to prove our innocence instead of the government having to prove our guilt. And she'll vote to help expand that and protect that in Jefferson City. Number two, she said she supports the Second Amendment Preservation Act, and she would vote no on any attempt to weaken SAPA law. You guys all know SAPA. It is what's keeping the federal government at bay from using, by force, our troopers, our deputies, our city cops to enforce federal gun control laws. It is the biggest expansion of gun rights ever here in Missouri, and, and again, Romine is 100% in support of protecting SAPA law from the rhinos who want to repeal it. Romine opposes red flag gun seizures. Now, that's always been a good thing or always been an important thing for obvious reasons, but that gun control bill which passed in D.C. last month contains almost a billion dollars in federal bribe money to give to states that pass red flag gun seizures. And so now, more than ever, Rhinos in Jeff City would love to pass red flag laws and get that free money from Uncle Joe. Romine is 100% opposed to that. Also opposed to any form of gun registration. Universal background checks, we all know what these are. It registers the firearms and firearm owners here in Missouri, puts them into Uncle Joe's NIX system, Joe Biden's federal database of gun owners, and it adds us all to a central list. Romine is 100% opposed to that. Every question we asked Angela Romine, 100% pro-gun, up and down the line, a strong response from her. And her public statements at candidate forums and media interviews back up this commitment when it comes to the Second Amendment. That's where the good news stops, because now we're going to discuss Lincoln Huff. Lincoln Huff, he's been in Jeff City for a while now, in the Senate for the last four years, and Lincoln Huff has been one of the leading enemies to gun owners in the Republican caucus in the Senate amongst the entire state. You think about the rhino class, you hear that phrase, rhinos, all the time, Republicans in name only. Lincoln Huff is the epitome. He is the definition of what it means to be a backstabbing rhino Republican who says one thing at election time and does the exact opposite when he's in Jefferson City. Don't, don't take my word for it. Start with this. Just earlier this year, Senate Bill 666, our bill to fix the problems with Stand Your Ground Law, the bill I mentioned over here with Angela Romine, the bill which would take the current 
requirement that you prove your innocence after a self-defense shooting and invert that where the government has to prove you're guilty so that nobody else can be Mark McCloskeyed by a liberal prosecutor. This is the biggest expansion of gun rights this year. Our bill in committee, Lincoln Huff, joined multiple Senate Democrats to kill the bill in early March. I want to phrase that to you again. Lincoln Huff was a flat out no vote alongside of Senate Democrats in Jeff City, and he voted to kill Stand Your Ground expansion law this year in Jefferson City. We all know how this works in real life. If you use a firearm in a defensive situation in a red county, you're going to be fine. But if you have to use a firearm in a self-defense situation in a blue county, anywhere in the state right now, you're likely going to be terrorized by a liberal prosecutor who is out to make a name for himself or herself at your expense. The current law here in Missouri allows that to happen. Again, just ask the McCloskeys. The bill that Lincoln Huff voted no on would have fixed all of that. And he stood right there with a sneer in his face and gave the middle finger to gun owners and said, I'm going to vote with Democrats against your gun rights. And he did on the floor. That's number one. Number two, go back one year, 2021, SAPA law. If you followed that fight, you know that we only passed SAPA in the Senate in the last day, day and a half of session. It was a nonstop drag out battle for months leading up to the end of session. And for the last week, it was a very intense hour by hour street fight in the Capitol in Jeff City. MOFC was deploying text messages, emails, radio ads, digital ads. We were beating on people, politically speaking for the humor impaired, to force Senate Republicans to pass this bill through. And one of the guys who was leading the opposition to SEPA was Lincoln Huff. So while well, he voted yes, on the bill, the final passage, the last day, what he did all session long, damn near derailed SAPA law in 2021. That's the kind of stuff that happens. It's behind the scenes. It's behind closed doors. It's while these rhinos get together. They try to figure out how can we block a bill in committee or who can we browbeat? Who can we threaten? Who can we buy off? That's what Lincoln Huff did. They almost got away with it. We stopped them with our membership, thank goodness. But that's the kind of guy that Lincoln Huff is. Just a couple of weeks ago, after the Uvalde, Texas, and Buffalo, New York shootings, as the national conversation again turned to how do we stop violent crime at a candidate forum in Springfield, Lincoln Huff was mocking gun owners who said, one of the problems that we have to address is gun-free zones. The Uvalde, Texas school was a gun-free zone. Everybody knows when you have an area where the good guys can't carry firearms, you're inviting sickos. You're inviting madmen to come to those places and, get, and, and try to get a body count. Whether it's schools, churches, you know, uh, city, city busing systems, these are where we see mass shootings happen time and time again. And so at the forum, somebody said, well, isn't the problem in part gun-free zones? that make it illegal for parents and teachers and staff members and others who are law-abiding law citizens to carry a firearm. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that solve the response time waiting for cops to arrive to each one, of the, each one of these situations? And Lincoln Huff, when he had the chance to fight for gun rights, to stand up for gun owners, he mocked gun owners in Springfield and said, I can't imagine anybody would be so stupid as to think the solution to these problems is more firearms. I can't imagine anyone believes we could stop these shootings by having more gun owners carrying firearms. Oh, really? You arrogant snot? Can you not use Google? There are dozens and dozens and dozens of shootings, mass shootings, stopped every year by law-abiding gun owners. Dozens and dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds. You, you don't think that a law-abiding parent with a firearm would have, would have risked his or her life to, to take out that shooter and defend their own child at that shooting? You see, folks, this is a kind of absolute elitist arrogance that you find flowing through Lincoln Huff. We asked him about red flag gun seizures. In light of this federal money, all this federal bribe money, would you vote no on a red flag gun seizure bill? Huff will not answer that question. We asked him about gun registries. A growing number of Republicans support some form of mandatory gun registration. 
We asked Huff, how would you vote on that bill? Huff will not answer the question, refusing to sign the MOFC candidate survey. So folks, in context, when you look back from a 30,000 foot view, Lincoln Huff has been nothing but an enemy to gun owners for years. He voted against Stand Your Ground law. He tried to topple SAPA law, mocking gun owners who are trying to figure out how do we stop mass shootings, and now will not go on the record opposing red flag gun seizure laws for the upcoming 2023 session if he's sent back to Jeff City. Call this arrogant guy up and tell him to apologize for this. Let him know what you think about a politician who sits there and smugly mocks gun owners, the very people who put him in office four years ago. And then thank Angela Romine for her 100% pro-gun survey and all of her comments backing up our gun rights. Guys, the primary is August 2nd. Be sure and vote pro-gun. In the meantime, share our video on social media, share it by email, and to join our organization, go to joinmofc.com.